Justin, and my tech talk is on Browserify. Not Browserify, by the way. It's Browserify. I checked it online. It's official. OK. Um, so Browserify is a really cool tool. And basically, it allows you to like, modulize your code in a really nice way. So it was written by a guy named Substack. I mean, his real name, his handle on GitHub is Substack. His real name is James Halliday. He's made a bunch of other stuff. Joe himself quoted basically a node god. I remember, I remember that specifically. And um, what he wanted was a, um, co like a common JS -like library on the front end. Because basically the way it is now, right, like what we've done before, I don't know, like Gulp and all that stuff, and even before that, or even with that, is you just basically dump a bunch of globals on the window. And then you just use them everywhere in your code. And that's kind of lousy and ugly. And it makes you put in a lot of script tags. So right, I kind of explained it already. So that's what it basically does. Now, um, like I just said, it basically um, use, it, it uses require module exports exports like Node does, but on the front end. And it's really kind of cool. So um, I guess, how does it work? It basically, you need to give it a start file to begin with, where you're starting to, where you tell browser part to start looking for something. Um, and then it basically goes through these files, goes through that file and looks for require statements. And when it finds a require statement, it goes and associates that with a file path and it grabs and it moves that file in. And then it looks for require statements in that file and it walks down the dependency tree until it's gotten all the files and it links them all together and then it gives you like a bundle file. So why would you ever want to do that, right? Well, the advantage is there's no globals. It's very modular. So you can write like little, just little files where you just require in things from other files that are nice and isolated and you don't have them polluting the global scope and you have them doing like one thing and one thing well. So when there's an issue, you know it's at one of these, you can easily find which script it is. Um, also, you can require in node modules on the browser side. So like things like event emitters that are just a node thing, right? I mean, like by default, it's a node thing. You can require them into the browser side and you can use them. And also, it allows you to do isomorphic JavaScript, which is like basically when your front end and your back end look like really similar, like they do very similar functions. So um, it does have a couple problems. Like it can't use all node modules by default. Like, like FS is not something the browser has access to. Um, it doesn't play nice with these things called AMD type modules. I can get a little more into that later. And brund the bundling process can be really slow. If you have like a lot of files and you're bundling them all together, it starts to like get really slow. Unless you use this thing called Watchify, which basically caches what you already have so that it's like quicker when it bundles them together again. Oh, it also can't do all these other things, you know, whatever. Like cheat on Code Wars, Jimin. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's got, the only thing is, the, at the same time, it has a really amazing open source community, and they've made tons of, like, transforms, they're called, to make Browserify work with a lot, Browserify work with a lot of these things. So, you can shim things that don't generally require, like, they don't generally module.exports things, so you can shim those, and basically create a module.exports out of that. You can babblefy, that's an, e, you know, you can change it to ES6 transpilation. You can also use FS on the browser side. It doesn't really work, like, FS, it, it basically reads the file at compile time before it even gets to the browser. Um, there's also, there's the alternatives would be like require.js, which uses AMD. I think, um, I don't know too much about it, but uh, Joe can definitely confirm that it's like a bigger pain in the butt to use. And window globals are just awful. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. I think like you put a bunch of script tags in and then they're all just sitting there and you can use them anywhere, but it's also like you can write over them whenever you want, which is not great. And so you definitely want to avoid that, which is why Browserify is so good. And here are my links, whatever. I'm going really fast, way too fast. Um, <laughs> so I also have a code example, basically. So I'm going to just run through that. Um, and I'll show you kind of how it works. So, all right, hold on. Right, so um, I'm going to like basically make a file or make a program. I have a server set up. It's got some stuff in it. And um, the first thing I'm going to do, I guess, I'm going to install. You can't really see this. I'll try to move it over to wherever it is. Oh, right, it's in full screen. Hold on. Um, I will install. Where are we? Here we go. Install jQuery. Okay. So I'm going to install jQuery. So now I have jQuery in my new file, and. Um, I'm going to make a stupid little program that basically uh, con like prints out on the, appends to the DOM, beep, boop, like a robot. 
And um, so here is my index. It's already got some stuff set up. Robot says is already in there. And then there's this thing you see here, bundle.js. And that's, um, I'll show you what that kind of does, but that's basically brow what Browserify works. So um, I'm going to start making this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write just a simple little file that just does, it just does this, right? It just does beep, OK? I'm going to write another one here that just does boop. I'll put a space. Um, I'm going to now here's some cool stuff you can do with browser. I'm going to require in some stuff now. I'm going to do var event equals require events. And then I'm going to just say I could probably just say event emitter probably more explicit. So, okay. Now I'm going to make a robot. So I'm going to basically require in two files. I'm going to require in beep. I'm going to say var beep equals that. I'm going to require in boop now. And then I'm going to require in my event file. Say var event. And then I'm going to uh, basically do a set timeout. And it's just going to, you know, it's just going to take a function that just event.emits and event robot says or something. And it's going to send in beep plus boop. And I'll do that after like 3,000 seconds or something, or th three, mil three seconds. Oh, yeah, you're totally right. Thank you. You're absolutely right. I did that before, too. I made that exact mistake before. Um, <laughs> this is not live, guys. I did this before. Yeah. OK, so, um, <laughs> uh, and now um, in appender, I'm going to require in jQuery, actually. And I'm going to make an, uh, I'm going to also require in events again. I'm not going to make that same mistake. And I'm going to do event dot on robot says. I will do a function that takes in the data. And I'm just going to do dollar sign. I have this message DOM element already. I'm just going to append to it data. OK? And if this doesn't work, I have the actual file here. So hopefully it will. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in main.js, I'm just going to require a pender and I'm going to require a robot. I'm going to require those two things. And now, the magic happens. I'm going to basically, I have it here, but I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. I'll actually just do it straight up from scratch. I'll do, make sure, browserify. I'll do main.js. And I'll, put, I'll basically pipe it into this bundle.js. OK, so now this bundle.js has been made. And it is like everything. Like this is all of jQuery in here. And then my modules are somewhere in here, too. So I think I can find them. I put comments here. So my module, one of my modules is there. Event is somewhere in here. Anyway, so you see it basically combined everything together and concatenated them into one nice little bundle. And now let's see if my thing works. Refresh. Give it three seconds. And there we go. So as you can see, that's really, really powerful. And it can do like a lot of stuff that like you can require event minters and all this other neat stuff that um, you wouldn't be able to do otherwise straight up in a browser. I don't know what else I should talk, to about, talk about. I have like a minute left. Does anybody have questions? Chandra? So when you're requiring the front, you're requiring the same file as the Actually, it doesn't. See, Browserify, it's like I was going to go over the process in more depth. It does some really crazy stuff when it's combining modules, basically. And it has a cache in it. And when it loads in a module, it puts it in the cache. And then whenever you use it somewhere else, it goes, oh, is it in the cache? It goes, no? OK, I'll put it in. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep it in the cache. And I'm not even going to touch it. It just doesn't load twice. So that will not, yeah, you don't have to ever worry about stuff like that, which is great. I was, that was one of my big questions when I was learning about this as well. Um, any other questions about it? Um, you mentioned something called pending. Like, what is that? 
Uh, yeah, I don't know the process too well, but some modules, um, they don't like export things by default. Like they're not from NPM, for example. And um, so they don't have like module.exports. And when Browserify is like concatenating and putting files together, it, um, it basically like looks for these things and then it uses them all over the place. And um, so shimming allows you to basically like put in module.exports for a thing, like put in like what would usually be like a global variable becomes the module.exports variable, basically. Um, any other questions about it? Okay. Thank you, guys.